Coming up, see how prayer helped this pastor become a walking miracle and a baby born without a heartbeat is suddenly healed by the power of prayer. Welcome to 700 Club Canada. It's so nice to have you join us today. You know, there's a famous song, Lean On Me, right? You can hear the tune in your head. Um, and often that song is used to, you know, sort of give someone courage, saying, you know, you can trust God, like just lean on him. What does it look like to lean on God? Like, I think in my own life, when I'm leaning on anything, I'm putting my weight on that object or on that person. And I think that's what it means to lean on God. It means to take the weight, the, the concerns, the responsibilities of all the pressures of our life and actually put them on God. Like he wants to do life with us. And so invite him into every part of your life. That's a way you can lean on him and lean on his help. He doesn't expect you to do it alone. I hope this show encourages you to lean on God, and we're going to have some great stories. Well, now this is how prayer helped Pastor John Barton become a walking miracle. As the pastor of a thriving church, John Barton never had time to be sick, but that was about to change. And I felt something in my throat, like a lump or something. So when I went to the restroom, I, I, I spit it out. Um, it was a gulp of blood. Even then, it took five days of debilitating fatigue, fever, and chills before John went to the doctor. In fact, he went to three, including a trip to the ER. But no one could find a cause. I had just come from traveling out of the country. I just started thinking, well, I hope I didn't get into contact with someone that was sick or what have you. One morning at his twin brother Michael's home, John started throwing up. That just started to progress, and then all of a sudden, he just kept saying that his head is numb. It felt like my head was about to explode, and I said, call 911. It doesn't feel right. Call 911. I felt too weak to pray. The only thing I had the strength to say was, God, help. Just help. If I don't get the help I need, God, if you don't heal me, I feel like I'm going to die. John was taken to Our Lady of Lords Medical Center in Lafayette, Louisiana. By then, his whole body was numb. He couldn't talk or hear and was having trouble breathing. While doctors put John on life support, Michael started recording, believing for a miracle. I wanted documented for the doctors to see and I especially wanted documented for him to see whenever he got out. That was my hope. That was my faith. After four days of testing and still no answers, neurologist Dr. Kevin Hargrave finally figured it out. Acute demyelinating encephalomyelitis, which is easier to abbreviate as ADEM. Usually triggered by a viral infection, ADEM is a disease that causes inflammation in the brain and spinal cord, resulting in a host of problems, nerve damage, paralysis, and in severe cases, death. The brainstem was completely obliterated with inflammation. If you look at the images, I mean, there's no square pixel of a brainstem that was not affected. This was the worst case that I've seen. He pretty much said, he, we just, we give it a 10% chance of surviving this. It was tough to swallow. It was, you know, it was, it was something I did not want to hear. They treated John with anti-inflammatory drugs, hoping to at least keep him alive. At times he was aware, but still unable to move, hear, or communicate. I felt so helpless. I literally felt, I felt death. I feared and predicted that if he did have a prolonged survival, he'd be ventilator dependent with a tracheostomy and a feeding tube. Still, John, his family, his church, and now people around the world prayed, believing for a miracle. I may not have known it in my natural sense, but in my spirit, my spiritual sense, I knew he was gonna come out. Then, after one week in the hospital, 
he was able to move fingers or toes a little bit. When a patient in his situation shows any degree of improvement, that's the best sign of further improvement to come. My faith is just, <laughs> it's activated, it's, it's holding me up, you know, the prayers and that was going forward, because I was needing it too. <laughs> With the help of a trach, John's lungs started working on their own. Doctors also attached a voice box so he could talk and worship God. Oh, God, I know I've been here by your strike. About four weeks later, he was moved to a rehab facility where he continued to improve. As soon as he rose out of that wheelchair, off that walker, and he started walking again, I realized, okay, yeah, he's, go he's gonna make a comeback. Oh, yeah. Different doctors would come in. It's like, wow, you're a miracle. You're a miracle. Then, after a month in rehab, John went home. I just was thanking God. Lord, I thank you for giving me a miracle. Lord, I thank you for your grace. In the past, honestly, I was a big skeptic, even though I'm Christian, but I'm no longer a skeptic. John is still the pastor of Living Life Church and recently married Lori. I'm just living with a peace and just a joy and this sense of gratitude to be alive. It has taken my faith to a whole nother level. I'm believing for things that I have never believed before. It's like, if God spared me from that, oh my God, I trust him. Well, the question today in Ask Anything is, am I really in control? <laughs> well, I don't know the context of this question. So I'm going to simply say yes and no. There are many things in this life that you can control, but there are probably more things that you can't control. So to be in control, well, it means to have, to have agency or decision-making ability. Let's consider the things first that we can control. You can control what you think, what you say, where you go, who you're with, what you eat or you don't eat, whether you take care of your health and relationships or choose not to, you get the point. God gives us control or agency over many things in our life. But sadly, too many people abdicate their responsibility and choose to be a victim or blame others for their lack of control. So yes, you have control over many things in your life, and you should ask God to help you in those areas that he leaves up to you. However, we would be remiss to say we can have control of everything in our life because we don't. There are also many things you don't have control over, like what other people think, what other people say or do, how other people take care of their health or relationships. You can't control the weather, even though you'd like to, or time itself, but here's the good news. You don't have to be in control of other people or external factors. You can trust God with those things. You see, learning to let God control what you can't is probably the most freeing thing in your life. So take control or take responsibility for what you can and leave the rest up to God. That will bring great freedom to you and to those around you. And now this is the incredible story of Sarah and baby Shelby. We were all excited. It was just like a big day. I worked in the emergency room at that hospital, so everybody down there knew that I was there, and we were all just kind of waiting on the, the big moment. At the end of an uneventful pregnancy, Sarah Mann was ready to deliver her second child. In the hospital, while waiting to be induced, Sarah lost a lot of blood. Then the baby's heartbeat suddenly disappeared from the monitor. She couldn't find the heartbeat. And at that point, I was starting to get a little nervous. 
because I had oxygen on and they weren't seeming to find what they were looking for. Her husband, Jason, was waiting outside when a flurry of activity swarmed Sarah's room. When I seen the doctor go running into the room, I followed him. I just remember him telling the nurses, get her to the OR, got to do an emergency C-section now. Sarah had a complete placental abruption. The placenta had separated from the uterus before delivery, depriving the baby of blood and oxygen. Doctors were able to deliver the baby via C-section, but the baby had suffocated in the womb and had no heartbeat. She lost like three quarters half of her blood volume, and I had lost a significant amount of blood. We both would have died. Medical staff performed CPR on baby Shelby for 24 minutes before finally getting a heartbeat. Because so much time had passed without oxygen, doctors were not hopeful for her survival. First doctor that I got to talk to after a couple of hours, he told me that Shelby was brain dead. There was no brain activity. Probably wouldn't live over 36 hours. And if she did live, she would be a vegetable. That was pretty rough. Um, I mean, there's nothing you can even say to that. I mean, that's just terrible. In a desperate plea for Shelby's life, Sarah and Jason asked for prayer from their church, family, and coworkers. I talk to God every day, and I feel like if something's out of our hands, who else can I turn to? He has the ultimate plan. So immediately, that's the first thing that we thought to do was to pray to God to intervene in this. Shelby had a weak heart, a collapsed lung, and no brain activity. Medical staff cooled her body to prevent more organ damage. But days later, there was still no change in her condition or prognosis. I watched one doctor trying to get a response from her. He was poking her in the eye. They couldn't get any kind of reflexes. They finally hooked her up to an EEG, and there was no brain activity. She was a perfect baby, and she was a healthy baby. And then she had this injury, and now she's going to be an injured baby. And that's really hard, because I think how how horrible to have this long-term, whatever problems it may be, because of one moment, you know? And she could have been perfectly healthy. On the fourth night, Sarah got out of bed and went down on her knees and prayed like never before. I wanted her to live, he knew that. And, but that if she was gonna live, I wanted her to be healed completely and not have, you know, all these problems that they were telling me that we were facing. And that if she wasn't gonna live, I wanted him to just go ahead and, and let her go. As she prayed, Sarah says she had a vision of angels holding baby Shelby and handing her one to another. And I remember thinking like, they just, she's just been healed. I just knew it like that. And I was so at peace. I was like, a flood of peace came over me. I knew everything was gonna be fine. It was like, that was my answer. The next day brought confirmation of what she had seen in her vision the night before, as Shelby woke from her vegetative state, healed. Specialty after specialty came by during the day, and it was good news, good news, good news, good news, all day long. She was healed, and I knew it. And I didn't really care after that, like they wanted to do testing. I was like, go ahead, but I know what it's gonna show. And it was right every time. One doctor, he told us, he said, there is absolutely nothing that we have done that has fixed this baby. He said, this is absolutely a miracle from God. He said, there's no explanation. He said, God had to heal this baby. Shelby was released from the hospital just over a week later, completely healed. That was over four years ago. Sarah and Jason say they are thankful God heard their prayers and gave them a miracle. She's absolutely a miracle. She really is. There's no neuro deficits or anything. I mean, she's completely normal. 
She's the perfect little four-year-old. You couldn't ask for her to be any different. God does hear what when we're praying to him. It could have went a different way, but you know, I feel like he listened to me and he did that for me, so I'm thankful for that. There's no convincing me that there's no God or there's God doesn't do miracles. He does miracles. I got a four-year-old running around here to prove it. I love that. God is still a God of miracles. And Shelby, she's certainly a miracle. So do you believe in miracles? You know, I believe we're in an age when we're more skeptical than believing. We have a cynical mindset when it's usually revealed in our uh, yeah, but talk, right? Maybe you're afraid to ask for a miracle because you're afraid of disappointment. Maybe you've asked, but didn't get what you wanted. Well, I say it again. God is still a God of miracles. You know, there's a mystery as to when he'll do a miracle, but we're told to have faith and to ask God to intervene. See, a miracle is something that's impossible by human intervention and requires supernatural intervention. I don't know about you, but there are many times in a day that I need supernatural intervention. Well, Jesus said in Matthew 19, verse 26, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. <laughs> I think that verse probably rings true for all of us at some point in time or another. We need the impossible dealt with by God. Well, he was referring in this verse to salvation itself, which is truly a miracle every time. See, without supernatural intervention, no one could be saved. God loves to intervene in our lives, even today. So ask him to. He gets to decide what it, the miracle looks like, but I know God loves to intervene on our behalf. So what do you need God's intervention for today? It may be, seem like a little thing, it may be a big thing, but I want you to encourage you to ask God. And we have a resource uh, that will help you ask. It's called Answered Prayer. We believe every answered prayer is a miracle because it's God's intervention. So call us today at one 855 750 We'll pray with you for that miracle. We'll give you this free resource, but don't hold back. Ask God. We'll be right back to help you tap into your potential and God's power. We truly carry God. We truly carry His presence and, and we need a deeper revelation. It's a growing revelation of, of who is inside of us that we can release Him wherever we go. His will is that heaven comes to earth and that happens when we're communing with Him. If a lot of people begin to, to step aside into uh, like the, their hunger for God's presence and choosing to meet him there in the secret place, uh, culture would look different. Heaven is waiting on us. It is waiting for the church to engage. And it, it, it doesn't even take that much. Just begin with a small prayer of faith, carve out five minutes. I mean, what God can do with that time. I mean, people don't realize that when we pray, it releases angels on assignments. I mean, what if over a billion people begin to daily pray and carve out this time to commune with God? I, I, if you could see like an air traffic controller that sees all the planes flying around the sky at once, like the, the it, literally the whole map is blacked out with lines. There's that much activity. I think that's what would happen in the spirit if every believer began to develop a prayer life. It would just be massive activity. And I think we'd begin to see miracles, signs, wonders, and salvation like the world has never seen. God's presence would manifest in culture, in our lives, in our jobs, um, because the heart and the willingness and the humility and the longing would rise up. It would, it would groundswell. 
People that give God the opportunity to move and he moves, radical things happen. I mean, we've seen revivals. What was the main thing that happens in revivals or, or the main precursor? Prayer. The truth of what God wants to reveal to the church is going to come to people individually. And revival starts with each of us having a relationship with Him. It's not just going to be poured out on the church corporately. It's got to be something that burns within each of our hearts passionately as our first love relationship. And as we are revived in, in that secret place, then I believe it spreads to the body of Christ. Who we are in secret. I mean, that is who we really are. That is our integrity. That is our character. Uh, that is where we get equipped to then go and do amazing things for God. And he will sometimes still, without the, the integrity, with that lack of relationship, still show up because he's God and he's supernatural. But I think it's going to go further and be self-sustaining if there's that relationship. And I feel like so many people in ministry and even worship leaders, you know, we're standing on stages, leading people in songs about connection and intimacy, and yet we've got none ourselves. And you can only run on that hamster wheel for so long until you burn up and you burn out. I think that sometimes we overestimate what our role is in the kingdom when we're young. And oh, over time, we start to recognize that we're in a body and we can make mistakes and do harm sometimes when we're attempting to do good. And the secret place reconnects us and re-anchors us to that which helps us understand if we're really abiding in Him and doing what He really wants us to do. God will give you an anointing to lead people. You know, uh, you could be you could be living in secret sin and not having a, a, a secret life with God at all. And that anointing could still work. Okay, God would still use you, work through you, do good. I mean, he uses broken people every day, but you would be missing out on the benefit of what it's all about. It's been said before, it's like, we need that as a foundation to build on for the supernatural, because it can't just be all about power. It's gotta be about relationship first. And that way it's got the structure, it's got the foundation. It's more integritous and credible that then God can come and show up with the power and the supernatural. We will see sons and daughters take their place that God has given them, that Jesus has given them a place of authority, that place of power in the Holy Spirit flowing through them. And we'll see the world transformed. We'll see His love increase and, and flow through people in a, in a bigger measure, changing the atmosphere, changing the world around them. That's what the Secret Place does for you, where God takes an ordinary human being and empowers them with supernatural power to accomplish His purposes right here on earth. Because then you can say, they that know their God will do great exploits. When you know your God, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by His Spirit. All things, all things are possible. Well, I think what's so amazing about God is that He really just wants a relationship with us. This is truly the good news. All the other things in our life flow out of relationship. So this is why we do what we do at 700 Club Canada. We want to share the gospel, the good news, the invitation of God to know Him and to be known by Him. If you become a partner with us, you're helping us do that. Start at $20 a month and join using Pledge Express. It's an automatic monthly withdrawal system that makes it really easy to give. And our gift to you for becoming a monthly partner is Divine Direction. This great teaching from Gordon Robertson has a 21-day devotional. It'll help you discover God's will for your life and how God has called you and what he's calling you to do in his plan for you. So why don't you call us at 1-855-759-0700 and let's do this together. Before you were born, before the foundation of the world, you existed in God's mind, and He knew that the world would need you right now. Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. 
the latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson. You have unique abilities, a unique purpose. When God looks at you, he's looking at you through eyes of destiny. Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. Available now. I wonder if you've been challenged today to actually believe God. Maybe you need God's intervention. Well, of course you do. We all do. In the little things and the bigger things in our life, we need supernatural intervention. In fact, we know that this world is not just about what we can see with our eye, but actually there's a spiritual realm that we actually can't see. And we were reminded today that imagine if every single person who had a relationship with God would pray. It'd be like all these connecting lines and we just have no idea the power behind our prayers and the power of connecting with God. So I encourage you today, whatever you're going through, whatever the people you love are going through, pray, 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 connect with God, become be actually grow in faith, actually believe God is who he says he is and he, what, that he can do what he says he can do. That will grow your faith and trust in him. And it releases his power in your life. And I want to thank you for telling us how your prayers have been answered uh, both through this ministry. Listen to these praise reports. Brian said, thank you for your prayers for my wife. She is now cancer free. Isn't that amazing? So thank you for praying. For those of you who faithfully watch and pray along with us, that's an answer to prayer. And listen to this amazing answer to prayer. Christine said, my brother has been battling mental health issues. He recently overdosed. At that time, I called your prayer line. Praise God, he was revived. Thank you for your prayers. Wow. I mean, nothing can be better than that. To know that that, that phone call, that one eight five five number was used in the moment of someone who was potentially going to lose their life and he was revived. We thank God for that. That's evidence of his intervention. That's the supernatural, miraculous work of God. So thank you for calling us, for trusting us with those things. And if you haven't called, please do. For the little things or the bigger things, just call us for encouragement. We're here to pray with you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Well, this is a very true principle in our life, that when we trust God, when we lean on Him, when we don't try to do everything on our own, He is able to do what we could never do on our own. And that's because He loves us. So keep trusting God today. Thanks for watching. The 700 Club Canada has committed to partner with Samaritan's Purse Canada as they respond to the earthquake in Turkey, including the deployment of emergency relief supplies, an emergency field hospital, and disaster relief personnel. Call us today at 1-855-759-0700 or go to our website, 700club.ca, to donate. On the next 700 Club Canada, author Jen Pollock michelle shares tips for living the life you were created for. And two unlikely friends become two unlikely champions.